The rune of death was plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation, and subsequently sealed away into the Black Blade of Malekith, the half-brother and shadow to Queen Merica the Eternal. The Remembrance of the Black Blade states, Malekith was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. Merica's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. The Rune of Death goes by two names, the other is Destined Death. Long before the shattering of the Elden Ring, when Queen Merica first ascended to Godhood, she removed Destined Death from the Elden Ring, and thereby designed it to exclude death indiscriminate. Was it the fear of death itself, or was it perhaps to hinder another? Queen Merica was an Empyrean and chosen by the Greater Will but as we know, Merica is not the only Empyrean in the Lands Between. Mikola, Melania, and Rani the Witch were also Empyreans. And there was another, known as the Gloam-Eyed Queen. It's the Black Flame Ritual Incantation that tells us this. Superior Black Flame Incantation of the Godskin Apostles, the Gloam-Eyed Queen led the Apostles and it is said that she was an Empyrean chosen by the Fingers. But who is the Glomide Queen? Veiled in so much mystery, there is very little concrete evidence of who she was. But what's for certain is that the Godskin Apostles were her subjects. The Black Flame's protection explains, the Apostles were all embraced by the Glomide Queen, and the Black Flame was their armor within. Godskin Apostles and Nobles are fearsome enemies, wielding the strength of the Black Flame. It is said that they used to hunt and kill the gods. The Godskin Apostle Robe's description reads, The Apostles, once said to serve destined death, are wielders of the god-slaying Black Flame. But after their defeat by Malekith, the Black Blade, the source of their power was sealed away. This means that the Glomide Queen, too, served destined death, since it was Queen Merica who ordered Malekith to seal away the Rune of Death. We can conclude that she would know Malekith would also have to battle the Godskin Apostles, Nobles, and potentially even the Glomide Queen herself. This may have just been collateral damage, or it was intentional. Queen Merica at the time had just ascended to Godhood and the Godskin Apostles were known for killing gods. As described by the Godskin Swaddling Cloth, the Glomide Queen cradles newborn Apostles swaddled in this cloth. Soon they will grow to become the death of the gods. Merica had no intention of dying, but instead of killing the Apostles just for more to be born and raised by the Glomide Queen, she went for the source of their power, the Rune of Death. The Rune of Death gave power to what was known as the Black Flame, explained by the description of the Scoring Black Flame incantation. The Black Flame could once slay gods, but when Malekith sealed destined death, the true power of the Black Flame was lost. It wasn't enough to just dampen their power, Malekith would also seek to defeat their queen. The Godslayer's Great Sword states, Sacred Sword of the Duskeyed Queen, who controlled the Godskin Apostles before her defeat at the hands of Malekith. The black flames wielded by the Apostles are channeled from this sword. Gloam and Dusk both refer to the time of day known as Twilight. Therefore, Duskeyed and Gloamide can be interpreted to mean the same thing, referring to the same person. And this is your friendly reminder to subscribe. When you subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out so I can continue making these videos for all of you. Thank you so much for doing so in advance. Now, there could have been another motive as well. As you may recall, the Glomide Queen too was an Empyrean chosen by the Fingers. The timeline is a little uncertain, but it can be deduced that she was chosen either right before or around the same time as Queen Merica since multiple Empyreans can exist at the same time. Rani the Witch's dialogue explains this. I was once an Empyrean. Of the demigods, only I, Mikola, and Melania could claim that title. 
Each of us was chosen by our own two fingers as a candidate to succeed Queen Merica, to become the new god of the coming age. I theorized that the Glomite Queen and Merica were both chosen as Empyreans and the next potential god for the coming age of the Ur Tree, and as we know, Merica would eventually be the one to rise to godhood, becoming the vessel for the Elden Ring. But Empyreans are still extremely powerful, especially the one whom they and their followers possess the power to kill a god. It can be theorized that Queen Merica wished to eliminate this threat altogether, and by sealing away destined death, she became Queen Merica the Eternal. As a result of her defeat, we could conclude that the Glomite Queen is dead and holds no importance to the present day in the Lands Between. But there is a young woman who speaks of destined death with such familiarity it has caused many to speculate a connection. Melina, the one who first approaches you at the start of the game, and then again at the sight of Grace. Melina acts as the maiden for the Tarnished and gives them the power to turn runes into strength. But she is not an actual maiden, and therefore cannot provide you with any guidance. She appears and disappears in a similar way that Ronnie the Witch does. Melina tells us, I'm searching for my purpose given to me by my mother inside the Erd Tree long ago, for the reason that I yet live, burned and bodiless. Melina mentions destined death atop the forge of the giants. I have long observed the lands between. This world is in dire need of repair, and death indiscriminate. As she ignites the flame in the forge, she continues, the one who walks alongside flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. Enya, the finger crone at the round table hold, foretold the following event. For the flame to burn the earth tree, a sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame and can lead you to the rune of death. Melina sacrifices herself to ignite the flame in the forge of the giants burning down the thorns that block the entrance to the Erd Tree and transports you to Farah Missoula. Farah Missoula is the crumbling arena in a region that is not affected by time. There you encounter Malaketh, at first disguised as Garank, who eventually falls to your blade. Because of this, the Rune of Death is now unleashed upon the lands between. There is also the Lord of Chaos ending, where the Tarnish chooses to embrace the Three Fingers and accept the Frenzied Flame. In this ending, Melina abandons the Tarnish, saying, You have inherited the Frenzy Flame. A pity. You are no longer fit. Our journey together ends here. And remember, should you rise as the Lord of Chaos, I will kill you, as sure as night follows day. And when you finish the game as the Lord of Chaos, the following cutscene reveals Melina picking up the spectral steed whistle before it fades away and vowing to kill you. Lord of Frenzy Flame, I will seek you as far as you may travel to deliver you what is yours, destined death. Melina's previously sealed eye has now opened and reveals a purplish blue iris while her previously golden eye has turned foggy and gray. Melina is indeed intricately connected to the Rune of Death, but there are other clues and hints as to her mysterious origins. She can be summoned to fight Morgoth, the Omen King, and has a weapon and skill set almost identical to the Black Knife Assassins. Her weapon is called the Blade of Calling. Its description reads, Dagger given to one who set out on a journey to fulfill her duty long ago. The power of its former owner, the Kindling Maiden, is still apparent. The one who walks alongside Flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. I theorize that Melina is of the Newman people, just like Queen Merica and the Black Knife Assassins, confirmed by the Black Knife armor description. The assassins that carried out the deeds of the Knight of the Black Knives were all women and rumored to be Newman 
who had close ties with Merica herself. The Newman rune also confirms this. The Newman are said to have come from outside the lands between, and are in fact the same stock as Queen Merica herself. But how does this tie in with the Glomide Queen? Well, Melina and the Glomide Queen are both closely related to destined death. Many have theorized that Melina is the Glomide Queen, in her spectral form due to her death at the hands of Malakath. She also has one eye that is sealed, similarly to the Rune of Death being sealed, and only opens after the Rune of Death is unleashed, and if she isn't sacrificed at the Forge of the Giants. But one important detail that sticks out is the matter of her mother. Melina talks of her mother multiple times, stating, I was born at the foot of the Ur tree, where mother gave me my purpose. Though now everything is lost to me, I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live, burned and bodiless. My purpose was given to me by my mother, but now I act of my own volition. I have set my heart upon the world that I would have, regardless of my mother's designs. This has led many to theorize that Melina is in fact the daughter of Queen Merica. Not to mention the fact that Melina is able to recite words of Queen Merica in different locations across the lands between, further solidifying a connection between the two. Now, from here on out, this is total speculation, but I believe that both can be true. I believe that Melina can be Queen Merica's daughter and the Glomide Queen. Empyreans can and often are related. Ronnie the Witch, Melania, Mikola, and Queen Merica are all related to one another. It is not so far-fetched to believe that the Glomide Queen would be related to Queen Merica in some way, seeing as she too was an Empyrean chosen by the Fingers. The question then becomes, how was the Glomide Queen related to Queen Merica? Some believe that she could have been Queen Merica's sister, and the half-sister to Malekith. If this is true, then I do not believe Melina would be the Glomide Queen. She may have been the Glomide Queen's daughter, but it wouldn't make sense for Melina to refer to her mother in the Erd Tree if she was, in fact, Merica's sister. Others tend to theorize that Melina is Queen Merica's daughter before she rose to godhood. This makes more sense. Seeing as to how Melina refers to her mother in the Erd Tree often, and shares the same golden colored eye. I believe that Melina was in fact the daughter of Queen Merica and the Glomide Queen. If this is in fact true, then it becomes a tragic tale of two queens, a mother and her daughter, finding themselves opposed to one another, and one of them falling to the shadow of the other. Melina was the one who was able to envision the flame and lead us to the Rune of Death. But was it the flame of the Forge of the Giants? Or was it the black flame of destined death? Calling back to her. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you made it this far, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more lore videos. And I can't wait to see you all on the next one. Bye!